That theme music gets me every time. Hey, both Ama- times. Bo- every time, both, both times. times. Yeah, <laughs> what's your point? Welcome everyone to Sharpen That Axe, your podcast, well our podcast dedicated to strengthening your skills as a guitar player. I'm Dylan Murphy, a singer-songwriter guitar player. And I'm John Gillen, a guitar teacher, guitar player, and overall guitar nerd. Guitar nerd, excellent. Nerd. Nerd, yes, we've got to get that soundboard. Yeah, one of uh, these days. One of, one of these days. When we have a budget. When we have a budget. <laughs> and sponsorship, Casper Mattresses. Where we're doing this until we can get a Casper Mattress yeah. sponsorship. Or until somebody wants us to send us, free, or somebody wants to send us free gear. Yeah. I'm okay with that. You can't see us winking at you, but we're winking into the microphone. <laughs> so we are here to play the role of, uh, I am the forming the guitar Rocky role, and you are the guitar mickey the cantankerous boxing coach <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> and we are here to uh, I'll look at you with my good eye we are here to figuratively beat the guitar meat <laughs> we can maybe edit that out yeah i don't know i'm trying to encourage children to listen to this or what yeah. punching a big thing of meat uh, we are here live from the depths of the UCC music department, uh, where we are under an awful lot of pressure with deadlines and everything. But, uh, but just clawing the way through the end of the week. Yeah, yeah, clawing, kicking, and screaming all the all the verbs in the gerund form. Uh, I just got out of teaching English lessons, so my <laughs> brain is really, still I in that mode. Tell. I, yes, I had no idea. No, uh, special thanks before we go on to John Hawk at the UCC music department for lending us all the gear with which to record. Thank you, John. Otherwise, there would be no podcast, and there would be no you. Yeah, he's he's actually one of the most critical people in this department because he just keeps everything running. Like yes, so. critical isn't important. Not critical is in what the hell are you doing with your life? Yeah, <laughs> he's not going to reach critical mass Get or anything like that. No, anymore. <laughs> it's just like a it's like a timer, <laughs> like on it's gonna explode. No, yeah. well, he might, but we trust that he won't. Yes. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, so first. Topic of discussion is pedal talk. Yeah. So yeah, pedal talk. Been people have been enjoying how pedal talk has been going. By people, I mean yeah, we've had some me. great feedback. Yeah, actually. So besides just you, besides just me, yeah, yeah and my mom. Uh, so <laughs> we are going to go into the pedal, which is possibly the next pedal I'm going to buy, John. If I'm being completely serious. Oh, and what pedal is that? We discussed it briefly last week. Uh, I'm going to buy the mini version of the Hall of Fame by TC Electronics. That's right. You said your housemate picked one up. Yes, for her fiddle. And damn, it is sweet. I need to... Well, she borrowed my equalizer, so now I get to borrow her Hall of Fame, and I'll probably probably buy my own. pretty sweet. Is it the mini version, or is it the big one? It's the the big one. Okay. So I just want to see... Yeah. Um, But I don't need that many settings, John. Yeah. So reverb pedals. uh, Anything that you need to explain to me, and by extension, the viewer, about our foray into the world of reverb? Yeah, so uh, first off, reverb is different than delay or echo. A lot of people sort of assume it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Um, So the difference being, like, if you've ever shouted into a canyon or something like that and you hear your voice come back to you that's whoa 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 yankee yeah. boy we're not all like <laughs> shouting into canyons over here <sighs> god you don't have a grand canyon uh, about <laughs> we have a few canyons that are grand but we have no grand canyon so to speak. or maybe a castle we don't have too many castles okay. over in america land yeah so take that you know maybe there's a castle that you could which point? Echo in <laughs> Okay, so, echo. So yeah. yeah, echo. So anyway, but that, that idea of your voice coming back to you and it says the same thing. Reverb is much more uh, the sound kind of bouncing around uh, a room. So if you're ever in a hall or a gymnasium or something like that and you clap and it just kind of bounces around, it's, it's not uh, distinctive mm-hmm. like a delay or an echo would be. Okay, so what, what, what would it do to your guitar tone? So as far as what it does to your guitar tone, there's a couple of different things um and a, a couple of different things that we need to sort of understand um on how reverbs are modeled okay. for pedals i'm here and i'm so ready there's a the first one is kind of the idea of a room i just explained the room like you know the room we're is. in right now exactly that if if we were to step back if you listen to our first podcast you can hear how much reverb is in this room. yeah that was the battle oh it's yeah it's pretty terrible so um and then there's the idea of a plate. So the plate reverb comes from old recording technologies where essentially what they were doing is they would they had to record in a small room, uh, but they wanted to make it sound like the microphones were in a bigger space. 
So what they did is they got this big metal plate and they hooked up some condenser mics or transducers onto it uh, and then put it into the mix. But what would happen is the sound would sort of, well, reverberate uh-huh. off of this great big metal plate in this small room. And it uh, makes the recording sound like there's more space to it. So you had reverb as a separate function in the okay. mix. And then the last thing was uh, in amplifiers, they wanted to capture that sound yeah. of the reverberating plate. And what they did is uh, Fender, of course, famous for their spring reverb. Yeah. They took a spring, did the same thing with the microphones, run the guitar signal through the spring, and that's ah. essentially what the reverb so is. So it's an actual spring. Yeah, it is a literal spring. So if you, if you what, cu- what type of amp do you have again? I have a Fender Blues Junior. Right. So if you've ever accidentally knocked that amp while it's plugged in, it makes that like sci-fi laser blaster sound. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, okay. That's your spring bouncing around oh, unintentionally. Okay. Right. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the idea of the spring reverb. So n- some pedals actually come now with that thing in the box. So oh, you wow. can you can get a spring reverb. Um, in fact, I think the Rocket reverb is one of those. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but there's plenty of places you can check out a spring reverb pedal. Okay, so when it comes to actually buying a pedal itself, we've talked about the Hall of Fame, the little red box mm-hmm. there. Um, I think Philip Joyce posted on his board recently in Guitarist Ireland, the Facebook group full of nerds. Hello, nerds. Uh, his beautiful pedal board. And at the very end of it, because you always put the reverb pedal at the end of the, yeah. the, the board, right? Yeah. And um, was the little version of the Hall of Fame. And I'm like, Excellent. yeah. So uh, what other, apart from that, what are my other options? I mean, I like Boss, so. Right. Um, I think a good, good place to start, like if you're just looking for something kind of under 150, you know, uh, I usually am, John. I'm a student. Yeah, well, w- <coughs> we both are. So, you know, if you're you're looking sort of under that 150 range, um, there's a few ones that are really great, and, and that could be since we have li- listeners on both sides of the Atlantic now, so that could be dollars or euros. <laughs> um, but especially used, like if you're willing to look for used stuff, it's going to open up your options a lot. You mentioned the Hall of Fame. I think you can even get the big one for under 150 used cool. right now. So that's pretty sweet. Too many options, too many knobs. Yeah, to do. Uh, it's it's pretty sweet. Uh, I gotta say, my business partner Mark Young has that one as well. We're just plugging you, TC. I hope you're listening. Yeah, because Dylan needs a new reverb pedal. Papa needs a brand new pair of reverb pedals, <laughs> and I'm gonna pick which one I like because I don't know. <laughs> and, and then, uh, of course, uh, the Boss Reverb series. The RV5 was really popular for a while. You can still get your hands on one of those used. The RV6. Um, and then another one. I'm a big fan of Earthquaker stuff because it can get a little bit weird. They're great, like, uh, if you want to get into some some different tones, kind of get some shoegazer just craziness going on. Cool. Definitely. I personally have the Afterneath, which if you look long and hard enough, you can pick it up for under 150. It's a little bit more difficult. Um, And then the, but their Dispatch Master, you can frequently find. Okay. Cheaper than that. And it's got some some cool features on there where uh, it kind of, they put a ring modulator sort of like towards the end of that, uh, of the reverberation right so you can kind of crank that up and get some really fun sounds out of it cool and if you're looking to splurge a bit more of course um like i said the afterneath there's plenty of other ones the uh the jhs alpine reverb is a really big one and then the strymon you know take your pick the blue sky the big sky everybody loves the strymon stuff right now um, with good reason. I mean, it sounds amazing. Yeah. And uh, the big sky, I think, runs about three hundred, and the, or I'm sorry, the blue sky runs about three hundred, and the okay. big sky about five. So, I suppose there are different options for each one, really. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the the blue sky is a, li- a little more compact. The big sky, basically, um, if you want to never buy another thing that has to do with reverb ever again. So all the bases covered. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing, and it's all digital. Like, but uh, all those things that we talked about, the idea of room, plate, and spring, um, whether you want a small room or a big room, all that stuff is covered in it, and it'll do it all for you, and it does it really, really well. Cool. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway. But the reverb pedal is kind of one of those pedals. It's that it's not like a delay or a wah or a distortion in that you can pick out what sound it is on the guitar. It's a little bit more subtle than yeah, you can really it usually pick it is. Out. I mean, before uh, this podcast, we were talking about um, what are some classic examples, and you really had to think to yeah. to kind of come up with something that would be 
distinct where you can hear the reverb and not the delay and not the chorus or you the know, echo like, or anything like that right yeah uh if, if you think u2 like u2 is really all about that memory man delay yeah like yeah. it's there's it's not so much about reverb or um andy summers from the police would use a lot of uh, reverb, but the problem is it's always like swimming in chorus or yeah, yeah. tremolo as well or something, something like else. that. So, um, yeah, it, it tends to be a little bit harder to pick out. But um, we, if you want to find a couple of tracks just to listen to what reverb can do, uh, really anything like surf guitar. So, yeah. like by the ventures, you have walk, don't run, pipeline those sorts of things yeah and then looking for like examples online we did look up a few ventures video clips and they are <laughs> positively hilarious <laughs> in how i don't know if twee is the word but they're just so wholesome and you know they've got some very uh they're doing the little kicks yeah you know. some, some amazing dance steps amazing dance steps yeah yeah it's yeah. an art form it's lost <laughs> bring it back people yeah bringing it back and the ties coordination good. is key man yeah exactly cool so i suppose now we're going to move on to our uh, our big topic of the day which i suppose is we discussed i think we discussed it maybe a little bit last week about motivation right motivation as a guitar player it's quite the conundrum i i think so i think we all suffer from it a little yeah bit. so um this was actually a suggestion from one of our friends so uh hello maddie we're hello matthew yeah we're doing you're your, not getting your blues driver back no, but you are getting a podcast dedicated to one of your suggestions. You so go. just so you know, it's we do read your suggestions. Um, not just Maddie, that goes for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, I think motivation's a bit different for everyone. Um, and w- what, what motivates you to keep, to keep going, to keep practicing, to get better at guitar? It's a good question. I, for me, I like... The idea of, I don't know, when I was younger, I didn't have a lot of real hobbies. And this is something that I've really noticed over the years, a progression. And Mm. and the idea of keeping that progression going is a big thing. I suppose we talked about this before, being able to play what's in your head. I suppose if you have an idea for like a melody line or something like that, uh, that's a a big thing um, for me. And being able to, I suppose, just being able to sit down and jam with people, like not being nervous about uh, showing off what you know, being able to kind of branch out in that one what about what about yourself as a teacher is it different yeah exactly so um as because all those things sort of ring true with me as well um just being able to to play something to jam like you said in in a group of people there's something about the real community <coughs> communitas um of playing with uh with other people yeah um and, and feeling like you know what you're doing. Yeah. Which is which is pretty exciting. In, in a way, though, I think that's still sort of based around, like, the fear of looking like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Competency. <laughs> yeah, which will only motivate you so far, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, but as a teacher as well, there is the idea of, like, I, I want to be competent enough to show you, hey, this is what you want to work on. I can work on that with you. Um, and certainly there's an element of just trying to stay one step ahead of the students. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Got to make bank. Yeah, and I've had people come in and they're like, hey, I want to learn Cliffs of Dover. And, and the first time that happened to me, you know, I got really big eyes and was like, yeah, I can teach that. <laughs> so I spent the week learning Cliffs of Dover. Um, and then came back and was like, all right, a uh, couple of steps in front of the students. There so you go. It's a good place to be. But I think that's a little bit different than uh, probably what most people are faced with on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, I like this idea of hobby and seeing progression and staying staying motivated through that positive reinforcement of of progress yeah really it's it's basically kind of like the guitar nerd version of being a gym rat and you know getting damn massive gains bro (laughs) guitar gym do you even shred bro (laughs) (laughs) no sir stop asking (laughs) so i suppose when it comes to keeping motivation going it's 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 a she's a fickle mistress because everybody's different right yeah, I think so. Um, so one of the things I picked up on this week, I was listening to uh, another podcast where they interviewed the author Stephen Pressfield, mm-hmm. so who's had an interesting journey in becoming an author. He's the guy who wrote Legend of Bagger Vance and oh, you know, cool, a whole bunch of other novels, obviously. So he's like a creative type, anyway. Yeah, exactly. So what he was saying about it too and obviously this won't apply to everybody but he was saying sort of the difference between 
uh, someone who does this for a living or a professional and uh, an amateur is kind of the mentality to it. Now, I personally don't really like the word amateur because it just sort of implies you do it for the love of it, but that's really why we're all here because we love playing guitar. Yeah. So um, maybe dilettante, someone who just kind of dabbles. Yeah, which is really very different to taunt Dylan, which was kind of the the mindset of everyone I went to secondary <laughs> school with. Yeah, I, I It's not my you. fault that my nose points up. You don't need to taunt me. <laughs> are, are you okay there yeah i'm fine oh, okay thanks fine now yeah yeah dilettante go on Sorry. anyway <laughs> so dilettante um which is someone who just kind of dabbles in it uh which if you're listening to this podcast you're probably not one of those people no like at some point it's you've okay. taken it's, it's gonna be okay don't you, worry you've taken practicing seriously so um but he talks about this idea of flipping a switch in your head to go pro to treat it like it's your job um, and that, that isn't necessarily something that's going to work for everyone. It might work for some people who are listening to this, or even if it's the person who just wants to have the best cover band in town, that might be something to think about because yeah. essentially if your goal to have the best cover band is to go out and make some money with your cover band, like then it's again coming treat back to it making like a bank. job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it might be that you're hoping to go professional with your music or your creative art. Uh, but that I don't think that necessarily works for everyone. If you're just someone who wants to be good at guitar and you do it because you really enjoy it. Um, so with that, we talked about a few other things before the show about what would work well. What are some of the things that can motivate you? Can motivate you? Yeah. Um, do you have, I mean, you as uh, a singer songwriter have done a few things. Do you have, do you have any? Uh, I've, on I've that? a few things. Uh, as a as a gigging singer songwriter musician guy person, I find that having a gig is a really good motivation I to think get so. there. I mean, nothing is going to make a band practice harder than like a gig where you're being paid mm-hmm. and you need you need to practice. It becomes, you know, it's not really a choice anymore. You want to get a paid gig, but as a singer songwriter, yeah, one thing I've started doing is I've started uh, I've made a kind of an Excel spreadsheet of songs that I've got already on my set list and songs that I'd like to add. Yeah, that's a good idea. So I'd like to filter stuff in. So basically there is some pressure there just to like, okay, finish the song so you can put it on the set list. So gig is a big thing. Um, I suppose, yeah, with guitar playing, it's creating deadlines would be nice. You know, it'd be a really nice idea just to, to like, okay, by this date, I'd like to have this solo done. Yeah, I think uh, in addition to sort of the idea of a gig would be, um, you know, put make a promise to yourself to put something out on your Facebook page. Yeah. It doesn't have to be anything fancy um, or your YouTube channel or whatever it is. Uh, maybe you learned to solo. Maybe you want to learn to solo. Say, okay, well, on this day, set a schedule for yourself. It would be, say, in a month, I'm going to have this solo and I'm going to put it up on YouTube Yeah, with everyone else that's learned that solo, you know? Yeah, that's that's it's a really good point to make this um, notion of accountability because uh, we get so distracted that if we trust ourselves to do something, we don't always get it done. Yeah. You know, I like this idea of like, okay, don't tell everyone what you're planning on doing. Like keep some aces up your sleeve, but at the same time, if you keep everything to yourself. You're not going to have any real incentive to get it done. You need other people's opinion, sad as it may be. Exactly. You know, so this idea of accountability, be it through a friend who like, oh yeah, I'm totally going to get this done. There is that pressure there to get something done, you know? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I've got a friend that I recently sent some uh, recording stems to. Cool. And But but it was a bit of that for me because it was like, I need to do this. I need to get this out there. And so I actually told him, I said, hey, you know, on whatever day it was, Thursday, I'm going to send you this stuff. And he was like, okay, well, you better because I'm expecting it. So I knew, all right, had to get it out get it done because I said it, I want to follow through on that. And if I want to col- collaborate with him in the future, I know I have to do that. Otherwise he's not going to take the time because he knows I won't take the time. Yeah. Um, Checking you could, in. You could always start a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, just, just a note on that. I mean, we have so many other things that we need to be doing right now, but we want to stay consistent with this podcast and like, we don't even need to be in the department today, but we took the time to meet up um after work and between assignments and everything just to take an hour and get this done so having this kind of i i suppose obligation you know that's why we're here so yeah. kind of if you can make music into an obligation you're kind of set yeah i think that's that's a really good way to talk about it 
Uh, book a gig or tell a friend that you're going to do something or give you it gives you that extra push to do it right and you know in addition to whatever your social media platform you can even put it out there uh i've said before my company uh, silver sound guitar you, uh, <laughs> right, ltd uh we i, I put it on the facebook that there's going to be video out with me doing a little introduction to uh tapping yeah so it means I had to get the video shot, edited, and up there so that you could see it. Yeah. Otherwise, people aren't going to come back. Absolutely. So, you know, that sort of thing, that doesn't necessarily mean you're, you're going to put out an educational video. But like I said, if you're going to learn a solo, say, a few days in advance before you put it out there, hey, working on this, stay tuned. Yeah. And then you've committed to something. You've told the world, or at least your friends in the world, that this is what you're going to do. So... Um, I think some of these things, though, that we're talking about kind of are still sort of centered around this idea of like, oh, gosh, I, I did this, I said this, and now like there, there's an element yeah. of fear. Do you have any thoughts on how to kind of um, do it through a more creative space or um, perhaps make it a little less fear-based all the time i don't know i I kind of i'm I'm relating to what you're saying in that i like to set a personal thing i've basically got this habit tracker where i track all these things i want to do every day and one of them is social media for example as Hmm. a singer songwriter and just having that kind of thing it's make it more of a sense of accomplishment when you get that thing done yeah you can like put a big green tick there or a happy smiley face or something like that or treat yourself treat yourself yourself. Yeah. yeah um something along those lines make it kind of a reward for you know, getting stuff done. Finish the album and buy a reverb pedal. There you go. You know. <laughs> the dole and buy a reverb pedal. That's the plan. Yeah, so, so something like that, I think, uh, can help a lot. I mean, I, I can speak for myself. If it's always um, just kind of being motivated by panic or fear. No, it's not going to. Yeah, you, you, want, you want that positive reinforcement. Um, one, a sense of accomplishment, like you said. Um, and then sort of take take the time to be creative with it. So mm. if it's a creative activity that you enjoy and you feel good about when you're done with it, even if you're not necessarily doing a gig or putting something out there, um, I think that helps quite a bit. If you're if you're limited on time, I think there's there's a lot to be said about restricted creativity. Jack yeah. White talks a lot about that. Absolutely. Um, so if you've got 30 minutes, why not make it something fun to say, hey, 30 minutes. And I'm going to record. I got to write a riff or I got to yeah, write a hook exactly. or something like that. Yeah. And then limit yourself. Maybe say, I'm just going to play it on three strings, two strings, whatever. When I teach improv, that's exactly what I do. This idea of restricted creativity can actually be really good. Instead of standing there and just going, I have no idea what to do. If you're listening to this podcast, you can play two chords. Yeah. Play two chords and figure out something to do with two chords. You know, So many things. Yeah. And then, then you can step away from it and go, oh, hey, I did something. And uh, I think that that just kind of helps keeping you going, you know. We've got rewards, we've got obligation, we've got restricted creativity. I mean, you'll find something in any one of those. Yeah, I think so. To get your motivation up and up and going. And it's all about consistency as well, because once you get started or back on the wagon, you realize how good it feels to do again, and it's going to make it easier to do it again. Yeah, I think so. And if you've been listening to this podcast, uh, you know, we've talked a little bit about just setting aside some time. If not, go back and check out the other three yeah, episodes. Yeah, run episode four. A new cow. hope. Excellent. <laughs> 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 All right. So now we're on to uh, what, uh, what, uh, what uh, we've been listening to. What we've been listening to. Exactly. John, you've been listening to anything? Uh, no, not at all. No. no. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, obviously. It's difficult, man. It is. It is difficult. Um, I have been listening to some things, but not as much as I would prefer or not as uh, as regular as I would prefer. Yeah. And, you know, that's just where we are with academia right now. And we're our, in that final month. Our coursework. Um, but we're still here. We're still here. So Spotify this week was kind enough to throw me a Discover Weekly playlist. And in that... Like every week. Uh, like every week. They're so generous over there at Spotify. Um, Spotify, if you want to sponsor us, you can totally <laughs> send, us some, send, us some, send us some money. Email us at Email us, yeah. sharpenthatx at gmail.com. Yes, we will actually take any uh, actually any suggestions or feedback if you want to reach us at sharpenthatx at gmail.com. We're there. Yeah, exactly. Um, Spotify. Spotify, yes. Discover Weekly. Discover Weekly. 
Right. Has so anyway, they, they threw me this uh, some fingerstyle guitar music in there. So acoustic fingerstyle stuff. Um, a guy by the name of Dylan Ritchie. Someone I hadn't heard before. So I went ahead and spent the time, listened to his album. Just really enjoyed it. Um, it's good. Just kind of lazy Saturday morning fingerstyle guitar. Have cool. a cup of coffee and stare out the window and go, wow, that's really great guitar music. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, there's a lot going on. I mean, he, he does, does a lot with moving bass lines, which any good fingerstyle guitar player will, and uh, just some, some good melodies to pick out. So Class. Yeah. Cool. I will check that out. And yourself? Um, my housemate, as I mentioned before, her name is Claire Sands. She's a really established artist here in Cork. <clears throat> Whenever she asked me for musical recommendations, I'm always like on the spot. I'm like, need to find something cool that she hasn't heard before. So I uh, showed her Shaky Graves, who is a one-man band dude, like bass drum and hi-hat and uh, singer-songwriter, guitar player guy uh, from New Mexico, who is just, he's dreamy, but he has some really, really nice stuff. And uh, it's so he can play guitar? He and can play guitar attractive? and he's attractive. Uh, that son of a gun. Man. Yeah. So uh, he's great. His album, uh, Dearly Departed, uh, no, Dearly Departed is the song, his album And The War Came. I, I dig it, man. It's great. There's a few tracks where it's just him and a bass drum and a guitar, and it's, it's so good. Class. Yeah. And what you been playing? Oh, okay. So last what week... What you been playing? That's our theme music for this segment. Last week, you talked about uh, listening to and uh, putting some of some Destiny's Child vocal riffs onto your guitar. And oh, yeah. Like, I kind of scoffed at the idea a little bit. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And now, now I'm sort of eating some crow is what I'm doing. Um, and I I went and listened to some of this stuff and was like, okay, I think you might be on to something. And I found, 90s vocals are where it's oh at, man. man. I found some Mariah Carey, right? So, and listened to some of the others, but I sort of settled on working on the outro to fantasy a little bit. <laughs> and it's insane like she's all over the place gymnast in 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 a good way like yeah uh and there's she likes to slide into her notes a lot so it's a really tasteful thing on guitar obviously you slide into that note uh, a lot of bends vibrato and then it gets kind of slippery so it's a lot of sliding back and forth between these notes so and it's like vocal shredding yeah it really is Oh, Mariah. But it's a lot of, uh, it kind of, it starts sounding like Steve Vai from, you know, his flexible days. So <laughs> it's kind of a whole, just because you can doesn't mean you always should sort of thing. Right. But it's, it's fun. So she it's will because it's Mariah Carey. Um, you know, you can also do it a bit with your whammy bar pulling up and going down on it a little bit. And it's just, there's, there's lots of, lots of tricks, fun stuff in there. Uh, so I, I'd, yeah, as silly as it sounds, um, I'd say go ahead and check out those things and it's really good for your ear training too and expand your horizons on guitar that's something I always recommend you know pick up a piece of saxophone music transcribe a horn solo or something you know because it it causes you to think about your instrument in a different way and kind of gives you something unique to put in there that uh, you may not always be able to do if all you're doing is just hunkering down with guitar music all day yeah no absolutely what about yourself I have been so I've been trying to find a good transcription of that John 5 song because I've kind of hit a roadblock with it. But I am going to take a... I have taken... <clears throat> yesterday I got a bit frustrated and I took the riff to Scarified by Paul oh. Gilbert and <laughs> Reeser X. <laughs> and I just broke it down. And it's just great just for getting the alternate picking going. Yeah, it, it's It's an exercise itself, man. So do you have it up to speed then? Goodness, no. I think I'm at about 70 to 80, depending oh, on how man. limber I am. But it's just right. the descending runs and everything. Like that. It's a it's, it's a great. It's still good. I there's mean, that's a super fast. Yeah, there's a ridiculous Jeez. video of him playing it with a two piece band. Uh, they're all wearing astronaut spacesuits. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen that one. It's, yeah, yeah, it's pretty great. So yeah, thanks to Maddie again for <clears throat> thanks to Maddie again for recommending that. God, we're all going so dry in the throat, John. Yeah, it's yeah. I I I blame the course. Blame, blame the course. Yeah. For me waking up screaming. That's why my vocal <laughs> course of course every are, are day. Friends, we're we're. Losing the will to live on our course, but we're happy to be here and bring this podcast to you. And it's mad to think that we've been doing it for four weeks now. So we hope so you've thank been, you. Yes, we've been enjoying it. We've been enjoying all the feedback and support and all around good vibes. So we're going to keep this up. All right. Well, future. just remember 
The tools you use are secondary to the practice you put in. John Gillen, 2017. Yeah, there you Stay go. Stay sharp, my friends. <laughs>